Hi, this is Trey Faster. Welcome to my film series review of uh, Volume 5. Okay, and I was reviewing the Back to the Future movies. Uh, okay, now last week I did Part 2, and now to the final chapter in the trilogy, Part 3, was was uh, made in 19... I think they were actually filmed back to back, but this one was released, you know, 2 and 3 were filmed back to back, but uh, Part 3 was um, released in 1990. Anyway, in this story, um, if you remember how 2 ended, minus spoiler, uh, after retrieving, going back into 1955 and getting the book away from Biff, the sports book, <laughs> which changed the future, yeah, they, you know, they were getting ready to travel back to 1985 when lightning struck the DeLorean, causing the dock and the time machine to vanish. Of course, so Marty was immediately stranded in 1955 with no dock and no time machine. Okay, but amazingly enough, a car pulled up on the road with a letter. Uh, I think it was a Western Union letter, basically saying that he would be there at this time to receive this letter. And actually, uh, what the letter was from good old friend uh, Doc Brown, who was uh, who was um, struck with. He actually got stranded back in 1885. Okay, and he sent Marty a letter telling him that he's okay and living well in 19, oh no, excuse me, in 1885. Okay, and that's how the movie ended. So this movie begins, oh actually that's not how 2 ended, 2 ended <laughs> with Marty running right after the 1955 version, running into 1955 version of Doc Brown after he sent Marty to the future. Okay, and so he, he, he as soon as Marty left, he came back, and I, I love how it ended part two where Marty running after the, he took off, the, uh, he came running back and telling the 1955 Doc that, listen, I'm back, <laughs> and of course, Doc fainted, <laughs> and then of course this movie begins with, you know, Doc, you know, Marty taking Doc, you know, the passed out Doc home, and of course when Doc gets conscious, he uh, thinks this Marty is a, this Marty that he sent to the future is a, to stare back now is a figment of his imagination. Hey, yeah, he even calls him Future Boy. <laughs> okay, until Marty points out, this is the letter that you sent to me, and you, you know, it's basically telling me that you're alive and well, and where the time machine is. Okay, so I can get back and how to how it was damaged and how now the 1955 version of Doc Brown can fix it and send Marty back to the future to 1985 where he belongs. Okay, but during the course of fixing it, okay. They discover that Marty discovers that Doc Brown actually got murdered in 1885. Okay, by uh, I think what's the guy's name? Uh, 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 Biff. What version of Biff is this? Uh, uh, Mad Buford, Mad Dog Tannen. Okay, that version of him murdered Doc over a debt of like 80 bucks. Okay, so Marty decides, listen, I'm I'm going back to the to the past to save you, Doc and bring it back, okay? Even though Doc specifically tells him in the letter just to go to 1985 and destroy the letter that he was happy and content living in the West. and But, you know, Marty, that's his friend, so he's going to go back to the past. So with current 1955 Doc, you know, they devise a way, you know, and dress him in wacky clothes, and he's going to go back to the future. He's going to go back to the past, 1885, and save Doc from getting killed, okay? And then travel back with Doc to 1985, okay, and then destroy the time machine, okay, and that's how this movie, that's the basic premise of this movie, okay, and let me say, uh, this movie I have appreciation for, I, I used to think this movie was lesser, was the lesser of the, of the sequels, but I actually think it's it's pretty de decent, I watched it again this morning, and it was just something about it, it had a nice little charm to it, because in this movie, the doc back in 1885, he falls in love huh, with a school teacher, played by Mary Steenburgen, Okay, and Marty meets his past relatives, also played by Michael J. Fox and Leah Thompson. You know, he played, I forget that what his relatives, his name is, you know, the Irish, uh, um, uh, Seamus McFly. He meets him and his wife, wife, uh, Lorraine McFly, or Maggie McFly, right? Yeah, Maggie McFly. He meets, you know, them and, you know, of course, of course they feel a sort of kinship. And then, uh, of course, Marty in the, one of the ultimate, uh, I guess, ironies, uh, on the movie, he, you know, he can't 
we didn't know his name, so he calls himself Clint Eastwood, <laughs> and he even dresses like Clint Eastwood did in the Man of No Name trilogy. Okay, and there's even a little nod to that later in the movie. Okay, and like I said, this movie is has a lot of heart to it, and besides the Doc falling in love, and of course, you, you also feel that strong again bond between Doc and and Marty. How uh, you know they're there for each other, and you know Marty's not going to let Doc down. But it's also about Marty, I guess, learning to grow up and to let things go. Because if you've seen the previous two movies, you know Marty has a temper, and he doesn't can't stand being called a chicken or a coward. Okay, that set, kind of sets him off. And even his past relative basically tells him a story. I think even about how his brother couldn't was like that too, had a fast temper and wouldn't let things go, and wound up getting murdered. So this is also about Marty's growth too in the series. Okay, and this is a just a sweet, sweet movie. Like I said, Marty goes back to save Doc, you know, and Doc is, you know, in his old inimitable style is adjusting in 1885, and then he, of course, meets, uh, you know, Mary Steenburgen, his character who plays teacher, who, of course, before he meets her, he, he doesn't think he'll fall in love. He, he doesn't think that's possible, but he winds up saving her uh, after a little accident, and, of course, he falls head over heels in love with her. And it's just a sweet, sweet story, and you know how Marty has to overcome his things and let things go, and not always fly off at the handle and stuff, and let okay. And then also about the Doc falling in love, and and then of course you have your <laughs> Thomas F. Wilson who plays Biff Tannen, who's actually <laughs> hysterical again in this movie. In this movie, uh, Leah Thompson's character is kind of more in the background. She, you know, like I said, she plays uh, Maggie McFly, the wife of Seamus McFly. Who Marty McFly, you know, who Michael J. Fox plays as well, and like I said, in, and you can see Seamus has a kind of affinity for prefer Marty McFly, you know, Clint Eastwood, <laughs> and he, you know, and he, and it's just a really sweet story. And like I said, there's a big showdown towards the end of the movie. <laughs> okay, and you have to know where whether Marty's going to let things go or not. Okay, and then you also have the the uh, the added burden of Doc being in love with. With Clara, played by Mary Steenberg, and whether he's going to let her go or and just go to the future and or be honest with her, and like I said, they have a lot in common, science and everything else, and that's just part of the charm. And this is really sweet, sweet love story. And Christopher Lloyd and Mary Steenberg have good chemistry, and it's just a, a great, perfect way to wrap this this series up. And I absolutely love the very end of this movie. And it's just absolutely perfect. And Robert Zemeckis, you have to give them credit. Him and uh, Bob Gale, I think they were the creators and stuff. They did an excellent job with this trilogy. Okay, just fantastic. And I would give, I'm gonna give uh, Back to the Future Part Three an eight. Okay, I'm gonna give this whole trilogy, I'm gonna give it a nine overall, just because I just think I, you know, the first movie was such a special treat. The second one was good, and I like the, you know, the repercussions and all this. And this one was this movie Part Three is a little slower, but it had that sweet love story between Doc and the school teacher, and then also Marty, you know, the Marty whether he's gonna let things go and. And grow up and and benefit from life and not lose his temper all the time and it's a really sweet way to wrap up the series again I'll give Back to the Future Part 3 and 8 just because I that's how much you know I really it really changed my mind watching it again you know from memory I thought maybe it was the lesser of the sequels but I think not I think it's a real sweet way to wrap up the series okay so that's the end of my volume 5 of my Back to the Future trilogy so tune in next week I'll be up to volume 7 I'll have to pick a new uh, film series. Tune in next week to see what that is. Okay, so let me know what you think of the Back to the Future Part 3 and the trilogy overall. Feel free to leave comments down below. And this is Trey Pastor saying so long and take care.